Hi, everyone. My name is Kavya Vagel, and I'm the Senior Director of Research at Just Capital. Thank you so much for having me here today. For those of you who may be less familiar with Just Capital, we are a nonprofit organization that measures how America's largest publicly traded companies in the Russell 1000 fare when it comes to issues of stakeholder capitalism. It all starts with polling the American public to understand what issues matter the most to them. We then develop metrics to measure these issues and collect data from corporate public disclosures to assess corporate performance on issues related to workers, communities, customers, and the environment and shareholders. This data is leveraged in our annual rankings and other research, all to incentivize change through both direct corporate engagement and investment products. It was only natural for us to begin exploring how America's largest corporations are addressing racial equity issues too. Today, I hope to give you all a deep dive into our data to show you how corporate America is performing on this ever important issue. I invite all of you to interact with me and my colleague, Molly Stutzman, an analyst on our research team in the chat. We'd be more than happy to answer any questions you may have. The legacy of racism in the justice system is not new, but large scale corporate response to it was galvanized in 2020. Following the police murders of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and so many other black and brown Americans, America's largest companies began to speak out about racial inequities a year ago. Back in June 2020, when we first started exploring this issue, out of the 300 largest US employers that we analyzed, we found that just 199, which is about 66%, made a statement in support of their Black employees and the Black Lives Matter movement. Along with these statements came a refreshed focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion, and the tangible steps that companies could take to address racial equity for all of their stakeholders, including workers, communities, customers, the environment, and shareholders. Sure enough, the public's expectation of corporations has aligned. Our survey research has shown that a majority of respondents and an even higher majority of Black American respondents believe that large companies have more work to do when it comes to achieving racial equity in their workplaces. And overwhelmingly, Black American survey respondents and respondents writ large believe there are several actions that are important for companies to take in order to advance racial equity, specifically for their workers and communities. In some cases, like on publicly disclosing EEO1 reports, we see that there's a small but growing corporate response. For those of you who may be less familiar, EEO1 reports display highly detailed intersectional diversity data, which is gender and race data, by 10 standardized job categories. We're reassured that on some issues, companies are aligning with survey respondents' expectations. But when it comes to taking a deeper look at the data, beyond just disclosure alone, we know that companies have a long way to go, especially in order to achieve diverse representation, which is one of the several elements that underpin companies' diversity, equity, and inclusion journeys. To help the public, consumers, and investors better understand and visualize how companies are actually living up to these expectations, we developed our Corporate Racial Equity Tracker. In April of this year, Just Capital launched its Corporate Racial Equity Tracker. This tracker was designed specifically to help evaluate how companies were stacking up against the public's expectations to address longstanding racial inequities. We started just by looking at America's 100 largest US employers and using information found on company websites, corporate responsibility reports, diversity and inclusion reports, and other public company sources. We then measured companies' commitments and actions towards multiple dimensions of racial equity. The tracker considers six key dimensions or broader themes that are critical to advancing racial equity. These are anti-discrimination policies, pay equity, racial and ethnic diversity data, education and training programs, response to mass incarceration, and community investments. While we know that racial equity is much more complex and broad than just these six dimensions, we wanted to ensure that worker and community related racial equity issues were presented in the initial version of the tracker. 
workers and communities are two of our five stakeholders, which we consider as part of our annual rankings process, as you may remember from earlier. Under each of these six dimensions, we measured 22 different data points that capture corporate commitments and actions to relevant to the, just each of the dimensions. These range from whether a company had an equal employer opportunity policy, policies on pay equity analysis, to apprenticeship programs and second chance or re-entry policies. I'm sure you must be wondering, what does the tracker actually look like? So I'm excited to show you. When you visit the tracker, you'll see a sortable table. Each row corresponds to a company. And for each company, the blue tags indicate which dimensions currently have at least some underlying commitments or actions. To dig deeper into what actual data points a company has under a specific dimension, a user can click drill down and it will take them to this table that includes all of the companies who have at least one commitment or action with a dimension and their values for each of the data points within that dimension. You can see this here with pay equity. You can also search the tracker by company. This will take users to a company specific page where you can dig into how any of the 100 companies have performed across all 22 of the commitments or actions. These screenshots are helpful, but I highly encourage you to visit the Just Capital webpage to take a look at the tracker at your own leisure as well. I now would love to walk you through some of the most salient findings from the tracker. While the tracker gives us a sense of how specific companies perform, it also shows us some broader trends on the state of corporate disclosure on racial equity issues. Overall, we see that nearly 100% of companies have at least one disclosure on anti-discrimination policies, education and training programs, community investments, while a much smaller share have disclosures around pay equity, racial and ethnic diversity data, and responses to mass incarceration. This overarching view hints at some important key findings. But before I dive too deep into these findings, I wanna spend a moment clarifying some of the language that I've been using and specifically the distinction between data points that are commitments and actions. When we talk about commitment, we're thinking it's a statement or a generic policy that notes that a company is dedicated to a certain element of equity or inclusion. An action, on the other hand, is a disclosure or policy that shows accountability or progress that's being made towards a commitment or something that has a tangible or immediate impact. So we found that large companies are highly likely to disclose general commitments. Again, these are policies that are meant to mitigate risks or provide general support around worker and community racial equity issues but they are much less likely to report out on concrete actions that demonstrate their performance or have an immediate impact. Just 18 companies out of the 100 at the time of our initial analysis had at least one commitment or action within each of the six dimensions, and not a single company implemented all 22 commitments or actions. We see this at a high level when we take a look at this tree map of all 22 data points that are in the tracker. As you can see, the blocks that are labeled C for commitment generally tend to be much larger in size. In other words, they have more disclosure from companies than those that are labeled A for action. This finding becomes very stark when taking a look at the anti-discrimination policies dimension. As an example, nearly 100% of companies have all of the commitments or policies that are meant to support equal employment opportunity and anti-harassment but less than 30% of companies have active measures like anti-harassment training or quantitative diversity targets that are meant to do the same. The tracker can also be used to dig deeper into specific dimensions. And here, I'll walk you through an example of how we did this with pay equity. Just in case it's helpful, here's some background on pay equity. Racial pay gaps are generally defined as the difference in median earnings between non-white and white workers. Research on the national state of pay gaps shows that racial pay equity is challenging. According to research by the Economic Policy Institute in 2019, black workers wages at the median, which is the 50th percentile, were $0.76, a 76 cents to $1 earned by white workers. This is a pay gap of $5.12 an hour or $10,000 a year. Hispanic and Latinx workers' wages at the median 
were 75 cents to a dollar for white workers, a gap of $5.43 per hour or over $11,000 a year. And while the, the gap in median pay has been closing for Hispanic and Latinx workers over the last two decades, it's very concerning that the black white wage gap has actually been growing. When looking at the intersection between race and gender, it becomes clear that women of color see the largest gaps in comparison to white men. According to the National Partnership for Women and Families in 2019, black women were paid 63% of white men's median earnings and Latina women were paid 55% of white men's median earnings. Though the state of racial pay equity is less than equitable in the US, our tracker shows that there's actually low disclosure on this action, and in some ways, it masks the true state of racial equity among some of the largest employers. We find that among the 100 largest US employers, less than a third report conducting a racial pay equity analysis, though it is a critical step to help identify racial wage gaps. What's more, even fewer companies actually report the results. And the distribution of wage gaps shows that companies only tend to release these results when they have achieved near 100% adjusted pay equity. We begin to see this in this slide here. Just 31% of the 100 largest companies disclose conducting a racial pay equity analysis. Though from our other research, we know that this group of companies generally discloses data at a higher rate than their Russell 1000 peers. When it comes to actually reporting results, just 15% of companies disclose the ratios, whether it's adjusted for worker characteristics and occupation or not. And 7% note that they have no statistically significant differences in pay between employees. This is an indication of deep non-standardization of this data. Here, we see that the distribution of adjusted pay gap ratios seems to cluster around one which is again likely because companies prefer not to report these results until the state of pay equity is actually relatively equitable. The tracker is also useful in helping us find which companies have strong disclosures. Microsoft, for example, shares disaggregated pay equity results by many different racial and ethnic groups. Starbucks reports on both adjusted pay ratios and median or unadjusted pay ratios. And Intel is the only company that we know that has released an EE01 component two, which includes pay band data by race, gender, and 10 standardized job categories, and helps us get a deeper look into the state of intersectional pay equity. While some companies are clearly leading on this, disclosures on actions related to pay equity have a long way to go. So what comes next? It's clear from the findings that companies have a long way to go when it comes to concrete actions on many of the racial equity issues. But that's exactly why, as part of our theory of change, we believe it is important to engage with companies on disclosure as a mechanism of accountability towards progress on racial equity. To meaningly push toward greater corporate disclosure on racial equity issues, we've joined hands with PolicyLink and FSG to launch the Corporate Racial Equity Alliance. As part of that alliance, we've jointly released the 2021 CEO Blueprint for Racial Equity as a guide for corporate leaders in navigating the complex racial equity space when it comes to workers, communities, and society. The alliance will move towards the standards conversation next, especially considering that, as we've seen even most recently with pay equity, that racial equity measurements are so nebulous and varied today. As companies continue to navigate the impacts of structural racism in their workplaces, communities and societies alike, I'd like to step back and offer a few of my own reflections. The first is that commitments and actions that are highlighted in our corporate racial equity tracker are just a starting point. Disclosure and transparency, even when the state of racial equity isn't perfect, is a critical step to holding companies accountable to progress and being held accountable to their stakeholders as well. Commitments and actions alone are not a substitute, however, for the deep interpersonal work that is needed to create inclusive environments and needed to cultivate a sense of belonging among black and brown colleagues. And finally, racial equity issues are cross-cutting because of how entrenched racism and oppression is in our systems. 
addressing it requires an approach that takes into account all of the different stakeholders, including how we can improve racial equity across workers, communities, customers, the environment, and shareholder issues. Thank you all so much for your time today. Of course, don't hesitate to reach out to Molly and myself with more questions or comments. Thanks again, and have a great day.